Hello and welcome to the Sarasota Film Festival Spotlight Series. Today I'm here with... Michael Tully, the writer-director of Ping Pong Summer. Fantastic. Michael, tell us a little bit about this wonderful film. Well, thank you for calling it wonderful. It uh, is. First of all, um, <laughs> Ping Pong Summer is a movie I've been, I had the idea in 1992 when I was a senior in high school, so it's a movie I've been dreaming of making for 20 years. Back then it was kind of a period piece, now it really is because it's set in 1985. Mm -hmm. And um, what I wanted to do with the, the experiment was to see if, what if I inserted my own sort of middle class, normal, loving upbringing into the 80s movies that I was watching at that age because I would go see like The Karate Kid or something mm -hmm. but then I'd go out in the car and put on rap music that I used to listen to before it became really mainstream. Absolutely. So I would like go to this movie and then I'd come out and have the Fat Boys or Run DMC on my headphones and I just thought what if and I'd play ping pong in the garage and I thought what if I inserted that into oh, wow. a beach coming of age summer movie and that extended to shooting in uh, Ocean City, Maryland which is where I vacationed growing up. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, you have a stunning cast on yep. this, beyond just the two young leads, and we'll get to them in a minute. But you've got some names and faces that people will definitely recognize. Can you talk a little bit about them? Yeah, I mean, the first one is uh, an actress named Susan Sarandon, who plays the sort of Mrs. Vaguely Miyagi. familiar. Yeah, you may yeah. have heard of her. We're, <laughs> we're coming up with who can play the female mentor who's who's an actress who's won an Oscar, who's the co-owner of a ping pong franchise, huh? Hmm. And uh, after months of research, <laughs> they kept coming back to one name. Um, and Susan responded to the project. She had seen my earlier film that I was here with in 2011, which is a very strange movie. And she kind of got on its weird wavelength. So at nice. that point, we thought we would get along well together. Also, we have John Hanna, who's yes. a Scottish actor. He plays Irish in the movie. Um, that's how good of an actor he is. Uh, <laughs> and Leah Thompson, who's yes. from you know all of those iconic 80s movies. Back but to the, the good, Future. Back to the Future, for one. Uh, Howard the Duck, some kind of wonderful. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about Leah was she's still a uh, young talented actress so we yes. weren't trying to use it as hindsight humor yes. but when you're making a low budget movie that's odds are stacked up against you for people to take your movie sure. seriously sure so we thought having an actress al already there's a credibility in that when you Absolutely. see these faces but she's also good enough that she didn't even have to act her yeah. eyeballs are like oh, would make you laugh out loud oh that's just fantastic now you have elicited just these incredible performances from these young actors. Tell me a little bit about those guys. We took it, we adopted an approach. Um, one of our producers uh, produced the movie Beast of the Southern Wild, which really? made its way okay. all the way to the Oscars. Yes. And their casting process, we I thought it was really important to have Maryland area kids who, yes. whether they were actors or weren't, I didn't want to ship kids in from New York or LA. Sure. I thought it wouldn't feel authentic to the town where Absolutely. we shot. So, so for example, the the love interest, the yeah. Stacy Summers, she lives in Ocean City, Maryland. She's wanted to be an actress. She's beautiful and talented, and oh, she wow. reached out to us. She missed the open call we did. We went around the state of Maryland for months wow. leading up and did an open call. Just wanted to see as many kids as we could. And a lot of them, for very different reasons, jumped out. Some of them were traditional casting, but for the two lead kids, for Rad and Teddy, the sidekick, the friend, he was at the library, not for the audition. Wow. His mom made him go get a book. He didn't even want to go to the library. And then my wife, Holly, who Holly Herrick, who had worked at this festival for many years, she saw him and was like, why don't you come in? And now he's <laughs> the star of this movie. That is just amazing. Now, the ping pong sequences are just fantastic. Tell me a little bit about the passion and the authenticity that was so important to you that you brought to them. Yeah, I really believe as a filmmaker, uh, the idea of faking that these actors are better than they are, I always sort of put a yeah. line up. Oh, yeah. So I would have rather that they were playing not great ping pong than them but faking, real ping -pong. like the Matrix with them like doing spins <laughs> and everything. So I thought it was just more authentic to, uh, of, of arcade in 1985 yeah. these kids wouldn't have been that great but we did a ping pong boot camp we had a great guy jimmy pelletier who oh, was wow. a, a, a ping pong expert and we took them into rockville maryland wow. and had a two-day uh, full five six hour days of boot camp wow. and then for the month leading up i was like your homework is you guys better be playing once a day and try <laughs> to get as good as you can um so it was great you know and the ping pong on set we were shooting on film because i think that made the movie feel more authentic to it 1985. Shooting it on Super 100% fake that grain. You can't fake it. And I feel like, you know, we had that discussion. The producers, we had that phone call months before, and they said, the dreaded film or video talk. Yeah. And I said, if we're trying to make an authentic period piece, 
I would be insecure presenting this movie at the Sarasota Film Festival if we shot it digitally. And to their credit, right away, they said that's the line. And I don't think, I think the difference in cost was negligible. I think people get scared. But again, we're dealing with non-actor kids who've never acted before and real ping pong which is like up, the, up to the gods I to know, see if you right? get it. And we, that's where we burn the film. The rest of the film, we were really responsible, and it averaged out to being our estimate. I think we kind of came right under, actually. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's so wonderful. In summation, what would you like our audiences to take from Ping Pong Summer? I think what I hope audiences take, I mean, it's all up to the audience themselves, sure. but I want them to think uh, ultimately if the movie rides a line of cheesy and sincere, and my hope is that people sense that it's coming from a very sincere, authentic place, that we're not making fun of this town or these people. So I really want ultimately by the end, whether you like the movie or not or say it's good or not, I want them to at least say the filmmaking was sincere and honest. I, I think they can't help but say that. Having seen the film, it's wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me, and I hope I'll be back again with another movie in a couple years, because I miss wait. you guys. Can't wait to see you. Don't be a stranger in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. Take care.